What's up, Internet? You're tuned in episode 103 of the Steam Deck Podcast, Flip Screen Games Weekly Gaming Podcast, all about Valve's portable PC powerhouse, the Steam Deck. I'm your host, Pete and Bessie, joined, as always, by my very good friend and co-host, Mr. Stephen Radford. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, Steve. So, I, I want to start by saying we're going to talk today about something that we've been talking about for a while, which is some of the regions that the Steam Deck has not made it to yet, namely... Australia. I know we have a bunch of listeners from Australia who have uh, struggled to get their hands on a Steam Deck uh, for, for you know, t- in many different ways. And I'm excited to talk about that. But I feel like I owe the folks uh, a, a slight uh, PSA here because I know if you're an audio listener, we were gone for two weeks. If you are a YouTube listener, we missed an episode at some point in the last few weeks. So there's an episode that we owe you. That we're going to upload that got lost in the <laughs> shuffle while I was moving and Max was away and Steve uh, was was working on a move as well. And it's a, a lot of things going on. And uh, yeah, so we, we owe you all an apology. We're back. I'm sorry for the, the lapse. And for those of you who reached out, uh, you know, if you weren't on our Discord and you didn't see the announcement about what was going on, I apologize for leaving you in the dark. Um, but we're back and uh, we, owe, we owe you a show. <laughs> Well, today's will be good. We've got uh, we've got a couple of good things to talk about, I think. Um, uh, but I guess we should start with the PSA that if you don't have a Steam Deck and you are in a region that has them currently, they are on sale until September twenty sixth until ten a.m. Pacific. It's just the LCD model that's on sale. You can get a sixty four gigabyte model for fifteen percent off, or I think the better value is the five twelve gigabyte model for twenty five percent off, which in the UK makes it. Both of them are well under two hundred pounds, uh, three hundred pounds. The um, the, the five twelve model for under three hundred is really nice. That's a really yeah. good deal. I don't know what they are in in the USA. It was not showing me. Um, I don't know if you want to bring that up, but yeah. I, I still think the OLED model is the way to go if you're in this for the long haul. Uh, I love that screen. I think the improvements on that that model of Steam Deck are well worth the extra but if um you're on a budget and you want to pick up a steam deck even the 64 gigabyte model is adequate you can pop a uh, sd card in there and you'd be absolutely fine uh so they are in the states the 64 model is uh just under 300 dollars at 296.65 and the uh 512 model is 336.75 so a little over 300 dollars, but still still a pretty good deal yeah. Um, I'm inclined to agree with you. Uh, we've both, you know, publicly come out in support of the OLED and that we think it's worth those, the, you know, the price difference for, um, the, the quality of life changes, let alone the improvement to the screen. But, um, I think if you're somebody who like is not, doesn't really care about OLED and, and, you know, whatever, like definitely not a, not a bad, not a bad price point to pick that device up at. Yeah, I I think so. And again, that's whether you're in a region that has them. But we did get some news this week that maybe it'll be coming to other regions, right, Pete? Yeah, so Valve is going to be attending PAX Australia for the first time. And I think that that obviously begs the question of why, right? And, you know, this is similar to... um, kind of the trajectory we saw when it came to a bunch of the territories that it came to in Asia for the first time, right? Like, they went and attended uh, Tokyo Game Show and, you know, um, basically were kind of making the rounds and and showing off the Steam Deck. And they had that giant interactive Steam Deck. (laughs) And, you know, then they they did all the launches in a bunch of the different electronic stores in in Japan and Korea. And um, uh, Vietnam, I think, was was the other country. Um, Taiwan, I think. Oh, Taiwan, you're right. Um... So, yeah, so I, I think the idea that this is, you know, them uh, starting to make the rounds and, and kind of, um, you know, getting ready to, to do a, another tour of, of a new region where it's about to become available seems like the most obvious reason why, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's always been strange that they're not in that region. There's obviously got to be some reasoning behind it, maybe some regulatory stuff that they needed to get through. Um, but on the PAX website, it said, while on the topic of love, PAX Australia welcomes Steam for the first time ever. More on that when the show opens. You're not going to want to miss it. 
Now, it could be about something else, but for me, I think the most logical answer would be the Steam Deck launch and having that on the show floor and having like a presence there. Yeah, it would make sense. Literally, the only other thing that like I think would make sense would be if it had something to do with um like Deadlocked, right? Because that's like obviously a new game that they're they're starting to to talk about. But it's like, would you I, not launch that at PAX? Would you not launch that somewhere else? Or? And, and wouldn't you talk about it in like? america first right like yeah. the country that like you're based in you know like why would you go to australia a region that you as we just said like have historically underserved and then be like let's come here to talk about specifically this new game that we've barely talked about anywhere else like if they were like on the deadlock pr tour right now going everywhere and talking about it everywhere then maybe they like you know that would that that could be the more the more likely uh you know solution here but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think that it, it does make the most sense that it would be something related to Steam Deck and that, you know, um, like you said, whether it's a regional um, restrictions, because I know that there are some pretty strict regional um, rules that apply to video game sales in, in Australia. Um, but, I, but I think it could just as easily be a, um, a production thing. Right. Because, you know, we've talked about how it's like Valve, not really a, a company that has a ton of history producing, you know, physical hardware. And, you know, with um, their expansion into Asia, they had a partner in that. Right. And yeah. And they may do the same thing in Australia, because in, obviously in the USA and Europe, they ran their own kind of distribution directly. You bought it from Valve. Right. They obviously partnered with other companies in order to distribute that out, but it was them selling. But when they launched in um, Asia, they they decided to partner with Komodo, and that's who controls all of the distribution and sales in Asia. And you go to Komodo's website to buy a Steam Deck, or you go to an Asus store right. to buy a Steam Deck. You don't get it directly from Valve. I feel like maybe this would be a bit different. I, I think Valve would want to own it there i think they'd want to sell it i think maybe the asia thing was maybe a language barrier as as well as a distribution issue and, so, and getting into the asus stores you were you had like a an instant in 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 the all of these stores across the region but there's like three languages and three different countries that they're dealing with there and that's launching in three places at once whereas mm -hmm. australia speaks english and I definitely, I definitely see that. Um, I think that's a good point that that it is, it is probably simpler there. The only thing I'm thinking though is that like <clears throat> the the issue with, you know, um, and I would imagine this is the case, right? Like I, I'm certainly not an expert on Australian trade or anything like that, but you know, um, I know that to to ship products to and from Australia from many places in the world is, you know like 24 it, it's a very long flight right yeah, it's a, pres presumably it would come directly from china right that's where they're manufactured and, you just have them go straight from there and like that's definitely a possibility but i guess that's the question right is like they don't own production in asia so the closest market where you could ship them from is where they have a production partner so uh, i'm uh, part of me wonders if they might not partner with a local technology producer for that same reason that it's easier to operate your you know a facility in australia than it is to ship product to australia and if that's the case um it could be to your point that like they just own and operate a, 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 a... that would be my guess is whether they partner with someone who has a big warehouse and handles that for them right like you know amazon fulfillment centers or they go down the route of they they open up their own warehouse, but they've also got to have like the the presence in the country for support, the presence in the country for repairs. That network needs to be established as well. They got that up and running beforehand everywhere else. Um, they they wouldn't have any of that there. So my guess is they probably do partner with another another company to do it, but I don't think this time around it will be a public like public partnership like it is with Komodo. I don't necessarily think it'll be sold on a third party website unless it's sold in stores. You know, we might see these in electronics boutique stores in Australia because they right. somehow still exist there. Yeah. And like, I guess that that could be um, a wrinkle there is like if there is some other kind of like infrastructural reason to partner with somebody and not control production on your own. Otherwise, yeah, you're probably right. They're probably opening a, a facility there. And who knows? Maybe that 
is how you you ship stuff from Australia to other places in the Pacific region because you own yeah, so you that, own that's, a, I guess a ship, like you know, a, a facility does, there. Does this mean it also comes to New Zealand at the same time? My guess would be yes, that you launch in Australia and New Zealand you and kind of think, cover both of those bases, right? Like, why not? They're so close. It's like obviously they're they're totally different countries, but like to your point, they both speak English. They're regionally very close. If you have a production center in australia shipping from australia to new zealand is a lot easier than like anywhere else in the world so like why not right why not take as much advantage of the you know um south pacific region as you can there i'd I'd hope so i really would like to see this it's been a while since we've seen them expand into other markets and it, it feels like they're ready to it feels like people have wanted steam decks in australia since day one right and it exactly. was really strange that they weren't there and it's now you know coming up to to three years on and it's like well it's we're kind of ready to to move into those other markets and i think english-speaking markets make a lot of sense for them yeah yeah of course right because i mean it's <clears throat> it's just easy right it's easier to do business in a in a market where you speak the language even if you have Plus, to adapt to regional you know differences plus one other crazy thing is gabe lives in new zealand and he can't even buy a steam deck himself which is kind of insane (laughs) you think they sent him one or you know my guess is yeah he's probably got one he's probably got the next one and the next one after that (laughs) he's probably playing on the prototype models you tell me he's illegally uh he's he's lying about what region he's playing (laughs) it's like it says it says says california it's like god damn it yeah, he's vpn and in to the to the valve offices to play like that's a violation <laughs> of the terms of service gabe <laughs> uh, the other alternative is that it's not the steam deck right this could be the big deadlock launch and maybe they launch there and they have some kind of like esports thing or something that goes with it but why that's australia a- then right why why start there that and, and again no 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 shade to australia it's just like You'd think that you would start that push it, it, in America, which is yeah. where the company or, is based. You know, it's like it's just like if it was a Australian company, then it'd be like, yeah, definitely, right? It could be, it could totally be that. Um, but it's like Paxville's a weird place to do those announcements. It's not like a Gamescom where there are usually those big announcements that goes with it. This is very much consumer facing. It's people going to try at games and meet developers that and said like that. though that does that makes more sense with valve's personality mm-hmm. than the alternative right like that you know you think about how many you can count on one hand how many times they've been at like e3 or something like that right like they always are more i think inclined to the only time they're ever really at e3 is when they're launching like a valve game on a console exactly right and that's what i mean it's like it's like two or three times that's ever happened right it's like you know it, it's not a exceedingly common occurrence so the idea that like you know um that they would want to start trying to just like get this game in other regions by just putting it in front of players and that maybe the thought process is that like a lot of the people that have access to it already live in the u.s or in europe because that's where a larger percentage of their market share is um i mean shit it could be both though right it could easily be like could be they could be show off the the steam deck and they're in deadlock is one of the games they're showing off like yeah that could also easily be the thing or maybe it's something else, you know? It could be that this is when we finally see that rumored Deckard headset. Nah. And they, they announce it and they nah. show it there. I don't think so. I don't either. But I, I really think this is the Steam Deck. Um, but we'll find out, you know? It's October 11th to October 13th that they're going to be at the show. So if anyone is in Australia and wants to go along and, and check out the Steam booth and report back for us, and please let yeah. us know. I'd love to know. I know we got Australians in the audience, so it, go go check it out, everybody. Please report back. And I'll tell you what: if you go and like record it and everything, I'll I'll put the video together, and you can we'll give you a shout. You know, if you want to do a little on the uh, on the ground reporting, you know, I'll th- I'll throw that. Yeah, it'll be really there. cool. And uh, you know, we we know that the, it's a popular region for the for the Steam Deck, or people want it there. Like as you said, we had people, we had multiple I think Australians in the audience, and some you know helping each other out in the Discord, try like we to get one. We've had multiple Australians join the Discord and be like, "All right, what's the vibe on importing a Steam Deck? Like, is that a yeah. good idea?" And it's like, I mean. It's not a bad idea, but you're, you know, <laughs> if it does, if something's wrong with it, you're kind of screwed, right? But 
Um, I know a couple of couple of you have done it and and had success. So um, I but, think I'd have done it if I lived there. Oh, I definitely. Yeah, I definitely am with you. I would have. Um, because what's the alternative? I just don't have this thing I want. It's like I think you can get the ROG. That's the alternative now at this. Point, yeah. So. Okay. Whatever. This ain't the ROG Ally podcast. <laughs> Great. <laughs> cool. Uh, let's be real. Let's be real. We want the good one. We want the good portable PC powerhouse, <laughs> right? Um, and I think I want nothing less than than that for our Australian siblings. All right, they deserve that. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Last last thing I want to touch on before we move on from this one is, so say say that this is the case, right? Uh, Steam Deck's coming to Australia. What what do you think's the next major region to break into? Right? Is like because I'm I'm thinking. There's not a presence in South America, right? No, there's no presence in South America. And the I main, the huge market would, that would be there for them to conquer would be ca- uh, China. Like yeah. China would be a massive market for them to break into. They've already got like their Steam store that's exclusive for China there. Like they could easily do a model of the Steam Deck that's just for China and they'd sell more there than they would sell anywhere else. For sure. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder. Uh, I feel like that's probably more of a when than rather than an if, but I I do know. That- yeah, that like takes ramping up production as yeah. well, and also dealing with the the Chinese government and getting like a license from them in order to be able to sell there. Yeah, right. And I I don't know. I I I could see that being a long road for them just because they have a pretty limited amount of resources. You know, like they're, yeah. they're obviously. I mean, not- it took Nintendo three years to do the the kind of Tencent right. version of Switch. Pete's cat's causing havoc. He's and trying to climb in the YouTube. ceiling. He's a little he's a little fucker. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he's having a lot of fun exploring my new office. Apologies <laughs> for leaping up in the middle of the show, everybody. Um Yeah, yeah. I I I I feel like if it's not China, it's it's probably South America. Because obviously Brazil is yeah, a real, but... is a really big market. Um but Import. I mean, PlayStation struggled. Crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I know, but you think about it. Like the play, that was the, the the region the PlayStation Two was selling in until the PlayStation Four, right? Yeah, because it um, was cheap. They were able to keep making it and selling it. You yeah. know, like and to, and before that, I think it was the Mega Drive that was uh, or the Genesis that was yeah the, had a similar the, the similar thing. presence there. But I think I think that's a thing that is like you know you think about it if they could find a way you know we talked about that when they went to to you know um to japan right that like that's been a historically you know tough to penetrate market for pc and that it's always been more console centric and more handheld centric and you know the steam deck ended up you know finding a a foot there right and i think like being able to um create an identity that or at least like have a have a um a, a elevator pitch that I think appealed to the the you know attitudes and the habits of the gamers in that region, and I mm-hmm. think that if you have a region like you know Brazil or something like that that's like you know historically underserved and clearly has a lot of people that want to play games there, but you know because of import and every imports and everything, um, it's just really expensive that like. I think the Steam Deck is probably a device that would do really well in that market when you think about it, right? Because even if it was somewhat expensive to get your hands on one, getting access to the Steam ecosystem on a, a you know a accessible uh, form factor, I think is something that I could see maybe being a really big success there. But I could see it being a real success there. It's that price point. They've got to somehow be able to a price point that's affordable for people and that's what they managed to do with the original steam deck when they released that 64 gig model but whether the import duties going into brazil just make that i think that's the problem not, i don't know yeah because i think i think it that really they get really really screwed on that <clears throat> that exchange yeah we will have to wait and see i i really am keeping my fingers crossed though i hope it comes to australia i really do me too yeah i know there's a lot of people there that want it all right, so um, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, 
<laughs> Another unfortunate happenstance with uh, anti cheat getting in the way of a game that was working perfectly well on Steam Deck. Uh, this is an unfortunately common story um, that we're going to have to revisit here. But uh, before we do that, let me remind you that this episode of the Steam Deck Podcast is brought to you by our Patreon producers for the month of September. They are, of course, Arnold J. Rimmer, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, a.k.a. Sobe, Steve Stompy, Susan Likes Cats and Also Boobies, Ty the Dude, Voodoo Vic, and Waka Hula. Thank you all so much for your support on Patreon.com slash games. Y'all the reals to the real, and we greatly appreciate your support of this and and all of our sister shows. Remember, if you want to go above and beyond just like they did, if you want to go check out our sister shows, Nintendo Noise and the Flip Screen Games podcast, uh, you know, all the cool stuff that we're doing here, however you want to get involved or show your support, you can find links to all that and much, much more over on flipscreen.games. That's our website. Go over there, click on some stuff. We greatly appreciate it. And it helps us out a lot more than it'll ever cost you. You know, unless you want to go above and beyond over on Patreon, and then you can get some cool perks and goodies. Of course, we uh, appreciate your support, however you choose to get involved. So, we got another big AAA publisher messing up a game that was working just fine on Steam Deck. GTA Online, uh, thanks to Battle Eye Anti-Cheat, it just doesn't work now. It was working fine. And as you've seen, right, uh, GTA 5... One of the most played games on Steam Deck. Uh, many, many months of, of the time it's been around. And you got to imagine a lot of that was on GTA Online, right? Yeah, it's pretty much probably all GTA Online. And that's the real big component of the game that a lot of people want to play. Um, and there was just an update uh, this week where all of a sudden you booted up the game and you get an alert that says, you were kicked from the session by Battle Eye. Please return to Grand Theft Auto 5. Now, single player still works. Um, uh, but it has been confirmed that they've added Battle Eye Anti-Cheat to GTA 5 and GTA Online, um, but they've not enabled the support for Linux, which means the Steam Deck does not work. Um, similarly, we've seen the same thing happen with Destiny, where they've explicitly not turned on support for Linux. Whether Rockstar's doing that here or not remains to be seen, um, or whether this is just an unfortunate misconfiguration and they will eventually turn it on. That's what I hope. However... They did put an FAQ up saying, is Battle Eye compatible with Steam Deck? And the answer is, Steam Deck does not support Battle Eye for GTA Online. You'll still be able to play GTA Story Mode, but unable to play GTA Online. GTA 5 and GTA Online are not officially supported on Steam Deck, and all technical support request, uh, questions should be directed to Valve's Steam Deck support uh, content and community. And then similarly, they had the same issue with um, getting a refund, right? Where if, if any players that have requested a refund because of this are getting directed to ask for a refund from Valve, and then Valve is saying, take it up with Rockstar, right? Yeah, so um, people have been emailing uh, Valve to say, hey, what's the deal? Rockstar told me to come to you. It's no longer working on my Steam Deck. Can I get this working? Like, What do I do? Um, and all you get is, unfortunately, Steam support cannot provide the best assistance with games made by other companies. Please click the link below for information on how to contact the support team for this game, which takes you back to the Rockstar page, which then tells you go to go back to Valve. Cool. Uh, there, there is a link to request a refund. However, it's clearly outside of the refund guidelines that, that Valve have published. Right. Um, so people haven't been getting them granted um you can try your luck if you want to but chances are you won't get them um and i, I, I think that's not surprising you know like I, I don't i don't blame anybody for feeling like um burned by this decision right but it's like yeah you're not getting a refund you're not getting a refund when you've put you know dozens of hours into the game already like they're just that's not gonna happen you know, yeah, it's it's unfortunate because this was working perfectly, you know, pretty much since day one of of it coming, like, like of the Steam Deck, right? And yeah, then all of a sudden, now Rockstar have made this decision to enable Battle Eye, and it no longer works. And we've seen this happen with multiple games before. It's just really frustrating that Rockstar have decided not to enable it for Linux and would provided no explanation. Um, I don't know if there's an easy way to circumvent Battle Eye on Linux, and that's why these companies aren't doing doing it and enabling it, because Destiny and Bungie made a explicit point of saying they weren't going to enable it there um, out of principle, that they, they kind of felt that 
it wasn't secure if they did disable it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I feel like ultimately this might have to be something that Valve solves. You know? I really wish like, Valve had some kind of anti-cheat system that yeah. they could just incorporate in and enable, and it was on the same level of battle eye that just worked. And you put a game on Steam, and you got anti-cheat. You can for just free opt with into it, it for a, for the latest yeah. version. Yeah, I think I think ultimately that's going to be what's going to have to happen. I think there's going to have to be some action on their side, or you know, something that's done, you know, uh, at the uh, hardware level, right, or, or like that is handled on their end, right? That um doesn't require the rock stars and the bungees of the world to support Linux when they don't want to. Because they don't have to support Linux here. All they need to do is just support the battle eye for Linux. Linux. Right, but but and um, you know, maybe maybe I misunderstood your point. I, I my what what I took you to be saying was that the reason that they seem to not want to do that is a security issue, right? So yeah. if Valve could be like, hey, like we have our own proprietary software that is guaranteed to, you know, assuage those concerns that you have, then you know, I, I can imagine they would be more amenable to that, right? I would hope so, but obviously GTA is sold on many different marketplaces. So that whether that anti cheat only works when you're playing it and you bought it through Steam. Weirdly, GTA five is one of the games that's not like a Steamworks game. If you don't know what Steamworks is, it's it's Valve's um SDK software development kit for developers that they can incorporate into their games. Um, so it automatically verifies that you bought the game. It has that DRM that kind of ties in with Steam. GTA 5 does not have that. Basically, when you buy the game, you can download it from Steam and they give you a code and you have to use that code that you get from your library to register it with Rockstar and then you sign into the Rockstar Social Club. Okay. And it's a whole weird little process. They've got their own kind of system that they use in order to verify that these keys are legitimate. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. I I, I guess I guess it's <clears throat> I guess it's a complex issue, and it's something that like is gonna probably um, just require wider adoption of Linux, right? And like maybe that comes with you know um, when we get to the point where they finally have that kind of general use launcher for for Steam OS, and you know it's perhaps easier to um, to look at that as a linux based platform right that is more secure and a little more closed and you know that um has less of those perceived variables that they seem to be worried about although who knows it, that could honestly just be their excuse that they just like don't think it's a significant enough number of players to deal with it you know and and maybe that's maybe that's the unfortunate answer I mean, I I can't imagine it's not a significant number, right? Like GTA Five is always at the top of the Steam Deck most played list, pretty much every month. And yeah. you've got to think it's because of GTA Online. It's still it was um, marked as Steam Deck playable until I think today, as of time of recording, it's Thursday, nineteenth of September. It's now been marked as unsupported because anti-cheat is not configured to support the Steam Deck. So at least they've made that change on the Steam Deck, compa uh, Steam Deck compatibility on um, the, Ste the Steam Store page. But it's still no kind of um, consolation prize for people that loved playing this game and, and wanted to just boot up their Steam Deck and, and play it, and it played really well. Um, I don't know. I don't know that there is a good solution at the moment unless Rockstar just goes ahead and says, right, we will support Battle The only other alternative in order to get this to play on your Steam Deck natively would be to install Windows, which is a shitty experience, and no one really wants to do that. That's an interesting thought, because we know that there's going to there's gonna be official dual boot support in the future. I wonder if that's part of their... That's the long game, rather than creating a, a compatibility layer of some kind or you know a proprietary uh anti-cheat that you can use on linux they must have their own anti-cheat like deadlock has got to have some kind of anti-cheat and i can't imagine yeah that's that a Valve, good point and think about like, how many multiplayer games that they run like dota yeah, and counter strike yeah like, you're you telling me they don't have some kind of anti-cheat that they can license out i mean they're not using easy anti-cheat from from um you know the unreal engine yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting question. 
But I, I, I think I think that to that end, right? Like I, I do imagine that like if there's gonna be a solution that's a permanent solution, it's gonna have to come from them because there's no real incentive for which is what we saw with with the steam boxes and steam machines right it was that none of these developers wanted to put the effort into support linux because it was too small of a market valve went away and did the leg work came back with proton as this like transpilation layer and it's just like well these games just work now you don't really have to do anything if you want to support them more natively you can do you can do like um things like cyberpunk's done where you have like a steam deck graphics mode you can support anti-cheat like battle eye and and easy in order to to get that working on on steam but um i i don't know it's it's a shitty situation i really hate that this keeps coming around it seems like games that work suddenly stop working whether it's because of anti-cheat whether it's because of a new launcher that ea launches or some other issue and it's all of a sudden overnight the game just stops working and there's no way to downgrade these games in order to continue playing them because they're online. And I think that's like, what's so frustrating is, you know, like I, you know, I, um, I can understand when, you know, a company kind of like makes the, the mathematical decision of like this, it doesn't affect a small enough number of players to warrant, you know, investing, but it's like, Man, like, you have an activated segment of your community that's here playing this game every month that's spent, you know, in some cases, full price for it, you know, even when it's 10 years old. And it's like, it, it does feel a little bit, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, right? To be yeah. that consumer who is like, hey, I was here enjoying the game, and then you just, like, are kicking kicking us off, basically, right? Like, this was a, this was... A healthy part of my uh my time on my steam deck and now you know for through no fault of my own right because you made this arbitrary decision to flip a switch now i'm now i'm stuck out and like that's that's that sucks you know it's it's it sucks it's not fair and i i definitely understand why people feel burned you know and and feel frustrated and that they want to get their money back and you know you hope it doesn't um you hope it just doesn't have like a chilling effect with other online games on deck where people are like, oh, okay, am I going to buy this and then not be able to play it because they don't want to support it? I hope so. I mean, I I can understand that anti-cheat has a place, right? There needs to be. Yeah, this, it's necessary. There's always, there's always assholes that are going to ruin it, ruin everyone's day. Now, I still think there should be a mode where it knows you turned it off and just put it or somehow of are cheating and it just puts you in with other cheaters and you kind of see how it goes. I think that would be hilarious. That would be really funny. That would be like a <laughs> hilarious cause like the, you know, that's like the, like the anti cheat solutions in like single player games, right? Where it's like, you know, you, there's like games that are notorious. To, like if you, um, so if you pirate it. Yeah. Yeah. It, like puts you in like a, you know, it's like you just hit a point where the game, like it's like you're halfway through the game and now you just can't progress. Cause you're a fucking dirty little thief. And it's like, <laughs> that's so funny. Like that's such a, that's such a better way to punish people than just like banning them to be like, all right, cool. Like you're just, you're just put in this echo chamber with other like cheaters and you can have a miserable matchmaking experience. Just like everyone wants to play with you. Yeah, exactly. I think that'd be so funny to do, but um, I I really feel like there must have been some solution that Rockstar was using before this. They can't have had a game out since 2013 that had no form of anti-cheat. Like, did they feel that it wasn't good enough and they didn't want to put the effort in to develop their own because they're busy working on GTA 6? So it's just like, know. ah, fuck it, let's just put Battle Eye on it. I mean, it's possible that... Um, I mean, f- a couple thoughts there. Um, first of all, GTA Online was their first online game. If I'm not mistaken, right? Or at least their first like massively online game. Um, so it would make sense to me that they would partner with somebody else rather than have a proprietary solution. Um, when it launched, I don't know that it had anti cheat. I do remember that there was a, a I thought I I think I have the memory. Granted, at this point, that's quite a long time ago. Um, but I feel like I remember there being an issue with rampant cheating when the game first launched. Um, so that's possible, right? That that was part of it. I'm wondering if this decision now is like. Um. again, like similar to what happened with Destiny where they're like, we have no sp- specific plans to support Linux and maybe they had a data that was showing that a disproportionate number of people that were cheating were doing it on Linux. That's the only thing I could think of, of, of in terms of like, why now and why not two years ago when the Steam Deck came out? But, but why not test and go, 
you know what, let's put Battle Eye on there. Let's see if it works. Maybe give it a month or two. And then take it away like if it doesn't yeah. solve the problem that i think comes back to the either there's another solution they have in mind that we're not privy to yet or that they just don't think that linux support is significant enough to warrant resources that's that's the only that's the only rationalization i can come up with in this moment right is like what motivates that decision there must be something that was happening a disproportionate number of problems with linux for them to be like you know, we're going to now renege this access when it wasn't a problem for, or maybe not as much of a problem for the last two years, you know? Yeah, which is a real shame. I did some quick Googling. There was no anti-cheat. So for the last nine years. Until right now? Until right now. That's crazy. PC, PC Gamer <laughs> Magazine says there was no anti-cheat. That's absolutely crazy. Well, that explains why there was an issue with cheating. And so sorely needed, right? But, like, a solution that could have catered for all of your players would have been good. I get that that's not always going to be viable, but yeah. there is a solution for Battle Eye. There is a Proton runtime for Battle Eye. You could have integrated it. Hopefully, they take the time and they do it, and maybe in a week's time, it'll be a whole different story, and everyone will be back to Hopefully. playing GTA. Yeah. But this time, there's no cheaters there. Hopefully, people voicing their displeasure will be enough for them to be like oh, okay cool we didn't realize that this was such a large you know vocal community that is missing this functionality now we'll work on it hopefully hopefully it's that simple yeah i hope so yeah well uh to those of you who have, who were affected um i i'm sorry i think that's a real bummer it's really a, a shitty situation when um you're not able to play your favorite game anymore and uh yeah i hope i hope it's resolved soon I was trying to find the reviews on Steam to see. It's still all very positive, but now there is like, yeah, thumb, there's a load of thumbs down recently posted. New anti cheats broken. I'll look another game that worked fine on my Steam Deck <laughs> that no longer does. So I think I think that's the way to go. Like if if you were affected by it, go leave a big thumbs down on on Steam and, yeah. and let them know. I think Reach that's... out to Rockstar support, right? Like make you know continue to make them aware that that you're upset and that you, you know, want them to deal with the problem and hopefully they'll address it. Yeah. I mean, the power of the people has shown to work already this year. Hell divers two was meant to get mandatory PlayStation accounts. And then that got rescinded. It's probably going to come back at some point, but it was good to see. Yeah. Sometimes it works. So good luck. <laughs> I hope you guys uh, get your game back or at least can get a refund. Uh, so, that's going to wrap it up for today's episode of the Steam Deck Podcast. Thank you guys for joining us oh so much. Apologies again for being away. Uh, moving's tough, but we're back, and uh, we'll... Uh... Never leave us. Never leave us again, Pete. <laughs> yeah, I know. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I better never go on vacation. This whole whole organization collapsed without me. <laughs> you, are the, you are the pillar that keeps us going. Yeah, know? yeah. You know, that's... Uh... It's okay. I'm I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to put the organization up on my shoulders, you know? <laughs> yeah, we're going to call you Atlas from now on. <laughs> sure. Sounds great. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much again for being here. Thanks for your support. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you next week for another episode of the Flip Screen Games. Nope. Another episode of the Steam Deck Podcast. There we go. I caught myself. All right. We love you. See you next week, baby. <laughs>